Whoa, look at that energy. In this video, we go back in time to the late 50s and early 60s and discuss a new shotgun slug that promised to be an improvement over what was available to hunters at the time, which were basically just the Foster slug and the Brennecke slug, if you could find those. Starting around 1956, George Vitt began experimenting with his new design. It was common practice at this time for a hunter to use the same field shotgun, often with a modified or full choke for all seasons. They had terrible accuracy using Foster slugs, and when they tried to use Brennecke slugs, it would often damage the gun or even blow it up. Vitt experimented with every type of slug he could find at the time, including the Foster slug and the Brennecke. I think it's safe to say that the final design that Vitt came up with was heavily influenced by the Brennecke slug, which had already been around for over 60 years at the time. Now there are minor differences between these two slugs, even though it'd be very easy to confuse the two. The Vitt slug does use an additional plastic gas seal, and the ribs are a little more pointed, which allows the slug to still center itself in the bore, but also transition through a full choke without much distortion. Just like the Brennecke, the Vitt slug is held together with a wood screw. So just like the Brennecke, it's designed to use the wadding as sort of a stabilizer tail. These slugs were sent to us by a generous person named Patrick Lewis. He also included this original box. And the box itself is unusual because it has these little metal tabs that you have to bend up before you can open it. Now these were not sold as a loaded, ready-to-shoot shell. He, the box just included the slugs themselves, so the buyer had to do his own hand-loading. But all they really needed was their paper shells, some powder, and a way to roll crimp them. With the information on the box and the included data sheet, it really wasn't that difficult for the average person to load these themselves. Just like today. We'll be using modern components today to load these. I used two and three quarter inch Fiocchi primed holes and 35 grains of Hodgkin's long shot. The slugs themselves are still over 50 years old, so please consider that when you watch the tests. Jeff and Officer Greg back out here with you at the uh, usual shooting site on a beautiful spring in California day. Hey, uh, today we're bringing you the Benko Vit. I'm not going to spend much time just talking about these. Jeff is going to describe them to you on a tabletop. But let's just say that these things are from the early 60s. They are very old shells. Uh, the standard shell is a, a lead slug that has a, a screw in the bottom. And then, of course, we have some that have been modified with no screw. So screwed and virgin, virgin versions <laughs> of the Benko Vit. Let's send them down range. We're going to destroy the usual stuff for you. And then we're going to send them out to uh, 30, 40, and 50 yards to uh, see how they work at distance. And just for you, Kiefer, we have used this laser to... Uh, to beam our distances down range, so let's get to it. <laughs> we are 15 yards now. 15 yards, that's a good starting distance. See where these things will land. Got a couple blocks of ballistic gel. Got a good backstop, big bank back there to shoot into. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's safety IC insured. That's right. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, my goodness, that had some recoil. I bet it does. The Vit slug, sometimes called the Benko Vit, sometimes called the Benko, has never been filmed with a high-speed camera before. Though the slug was accurate enough to hit the gel blocks, it just really didn't hit it in the direct center. I think we can attribute a lot of the problem to the broken piece of the gas seal, which is what it needs for stability. I think we can blame 50 years of time causing that plastic to become a little brittle. But the slug did manage to go through three of these gel blocks, which is a total of around 12 inches of ballistic gel. Everyone likes the lead plate, so... How many pounds is that lead plate? It's a 25 pound style lead plate. Wow, it's pretty thick. It's very thick. I don't so think it's going to go through, but we'll see what kind of cavity it leaves. But we're aiming at the little blue square at the top. Yes. And these things kick hard, so hopefully uh, Greg... Thanks. His, his shoulder is going to hold out. Oh, boy. Maybe I should have loaded them a little lighter. <laughs> 
Again, we see a large part of the gas seal missing from the slug. And the slug is yawing around quite a bit. We certainly can't blame Greg's marksmanship for the lack of accuracy on this shot. So that's a BFH right there. That is you a... see parts of the slug. Yep. And here's what's cool. There's your little fiber wad yep. stuck to a nail. You can kind of see it's the a screw. Screw, I mean. Uh, you're going to wow. make people not be able to sleep at night. It's the difference doing between the uh, aluminum and aluminum. Because <laughs> that's very important. So there's your fiber wad. But look at that. Planted in there. Screw well, I didn't think the screw would be its own. Uh, don't drop it on your foot. Screwed that thing good. That's a big, very big cavity there. Yep. Didn't, it, of course, didn't go through. This thing is much thicker now. Screwed. Over an inch and a half thick. That's less than two inches. Yeah. Okay. Cinder block, as, or whatever it's really called. <laughs> <laughs> Russian ballistic gel. Russian ballistic gel, there you go. Okay, whenever you're ready. Ooh. Wow, Cloud I think it went blocks. right through that. This shot looked a little more promising as we see the gas seal is mostly intact. The slug had enough energy to blow through the front of the cinder block and also out the back. Next up, an actual Volkswagen engine. <laughs> I'm right there. Okay, what, what are you aiming at on the turbo? Well, either the cast iron spot or the aluminum part. I would go with the cast iron, iron irinium. All right. As they say in England. Oh my. I don't think it penetrated it. I don't think it. we did much to it at That's all. tougher than I thought. Come on, Sarkis, and he needs to hit it with a 50. Yeah. Well, our luck didn't hold out. Again, we see a piece of the gas seal flying across the bottom of the screen. The slug, again, drifts a little bit to the left. But at least we're starting to see a trend here. The slugs are constantly going to the left, so Greg will begin to bring his point of aim to the right a little more. Do a, doing a do-over. So that one, if I was holding dead center, was maybe an inch and a half, two inches to the left. So I'm gonna hold slightly right between the uh, center of the aluminum and the black hole. The black hole, that's a technical term. <laughs> okay, I am ready. Here we go. Woo! That's a little better. See a little puff of uh, blue smoke coming out there? Yeah. Now it appears the gas seal is 100% intact in this shot, but the slug is yawing around a lot. Even that little bit of yawing will cause inaccuracies. And it makes it very difficult to predict where the slug will actually impact. That thing's pretty tough, man. So actually, that one seemed to be a little more accurate. I was kind of aiming right in here because they've been drifting left. Yeah. And uh, it definitely cracked the aluminum. But I don't know if you can see it right there. A piece of that slug is lodged in there with the screw. Yeah. that's. At least it broke it this time, my gosh. Right screwed it. Okay. And there versus the first one on the uh, cast iron. Yeah, just so laughed at that one. Look right up in there in a transflux capacitor. You can see all those... Uh, I hope people aren't mad that we're gonna, that we shot a turbo, even though it's scattered, <laughs> broken. Shot a turbo. Turbo lover. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the red dot on the can on the right, and see if I can't split both cans down the center. Bold claims. Okay, he called it. And what are we shooting this time? Uh, they're called Vienna sausages. Or if you're in Austria, they're just called sausages? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I don't know, I think that got the can on the left. <laughs> We 
would definitely give Greg a lot of points here for being able to open a can of Vienna sausages with a shotgun, but he loses 10 points for not keeping the can on the table. All right, you hit it at least. That, that hit counts it. for something. Barely open it up. I was aiming for here, thinking that it would hit here, and it actually went up a little bit high. It yeah. Skimmed the edge, so we almost got this one open. Most importantly, <laughs> here's your Vienna sausage or your cocktail wiener. Now, there's someone on the comment section that's been asking for a Vienna sausage shaped round. We've shoot, done that though. Shoot Vienna sausages. We did that like years ago. We had uh, to freeze them. There you go. That's for you right there. <laughs> Meat slug. Meat slug, not a bad We've uh, done that. Not a bad band name. Man, really. people forget so quickly after four years. So what are we shooting at this time? It's a pellet rifle target. Oh, that should be no problem hitting that with a slug that's not accurate. <laughs> Let's give that a go. Okay, I am ready. I think you hit one. Yeah, I was certain they said at the store that thing was rated for shotgun slugs. For shotgun slugs? Yeah. I, I think they might have fibbed to you a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, knowing that these things drifted a little left, I aimed right here in this gap. And sure enough, we hit it right here on the little yellow swinger. You, and you did call that. You said the third one over. Yeah, so right on the yellow swinger. Kids, get Google yellow swinger party and see <laughs> see what happens. So what we found downrange, this thing blasted around so fast it hit this little reset bar blew it out and it was actually stuck together just like that when I found it. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so. I can't believe you hit that thing on the first try. Me neither actually. Yeah. Danny can do it but not the OG. <laughs> You'll be the hero of this week. They, well, they forget all the other times that you got Until I missed the shot. first thing Jeff. Yeah. Why don't you get a guy who can shoot? <laughs> yeah. Come on out. <laughs> Come on out. This shot actually surprised us quite a bit just due to the inaccuracy and unpredictable nature of these slugs. And it might be a little surprising to some people seeing that slug go right through that metal target. I get a lot of comments from people saying that the targets have to be clamped down, otherwise the slug will just push it away. I can only assume they're using the experience of trying to punch a balloon in the air with their fist. I'm not sure. Okay, now a uh, well, accuracy test. Greg's gonna start out shooting the green jug, and Wait, then the. Do you want me to hit the green one or the Verdian Lake? Well, there, there's the teal, the green, the lime green. There's Coke bottle. <laughs> okay, how about the uh, closest yep. one to us? All right, let's do that. Whoa! Look at that energy. Ready for the next one? I'm ready. <laughs> You're doing well. 30 yards. That was 30? That was 30. Okay, next one is 40. Miss. Take your time. Oh, that's considered a hit. I was holding way off to the right. And we got one left for 50 yards. Ah. Actually, I saw it wiggle side to side, but. Okay. Well, two out of, uh, you got one more? Nope. I got some federal flight control. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait. Now Patrick also wanted us to take the screw out of these and just send the slug by itself to see how stable that was in flight. Now when he tried this at 25 yards, he was getting pretty good results. Ready when you are. All right, right for the, uh, the name of the piece. Okay. Now our shot was only at 15 yards, but out of all the shots previous to this, this was probably the most accurate one of all. But how will it do at further distances like 40 yards away? These are the virgin ones, right? They have no screw? They have no screw, yeah. It's supposed to be super accurate this way. Let's give them a try. Okay. Look out for the tumbleweed. Coming at me. <laughs> it's getting windy. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Um, Negative. hit the dirt. Hit that 
ice jug though. Yeah. When you're ready. I'm ready. Nope. I don't know where these things are going. I think it hit the board. Well, there you have it, the Benko Vit Aerodynamic Slug. In its day when it was still new and the plastic wasn't degraded, I'm sure these were as accurate as they claimed. Most people that collect old slugs like this never shoot them, and you can kind of see why. It's kind of pointless, but it was a rare opportunity to test these out and show them to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.